All right. Well, hey there, everyone on LinkedIn joining us today. Uh, my name is Kabir, the CEO of OneTrust, and I'm joined today on our LinkedIn Live with Scott Bridgen, who leads our GRC offering um, and is our lead for um, everything we do GRC. Um, and Scott, I'm super excited to, to be here with you today. It's a cool, I think, milestone for you and me to reflect back on, on how we met several years ago uh, in London at a privacy conference. Um, and you were at the time working for a well-known GRC company in the space, and you had kind of been one of the first in the market to see privacy and GRC coming together many, many years ago. And then you got to join our team and actually be the first in the world to actually make it happen. And yeah. so, yeah, re really cool to reflect back on that with you while we were prepping for this. Um, so maybe, Scott, tell us a little bit about um, yourself. I think you're joining us from London. Um, I'm here from our beautiful empty office in Atlanta because uh, <laughs> uh, everyone's working from home. And um, yeah, tell us a little bit about your background and, and what have you kind of done for OneTrust since you came on board a couple of years ago for GRC? Absolutely. So, um, well, I'm coming to you from a broom cupboard, hence why I've got a nice background behind me. That it's, doesn't say, it's like a perfect black studio room. I, I know. My, my office flooded. We've had terrible rain over the past four hours. So oh, I'm, no. literally, I'm literally in a broom cupboard. So I thought I'd, <laughs> I'd hide the background. Um, so yeah, look, it's been a whirlwind year. So my background, like, I've worked in Vendorland for many, many, many years, a um, bit of risk management before that. And now at OneTrust, I've got the opportunity to take some of the great work that we've done on the privacy side of things and just extend it out into the GRC world. And it's but like I've been given a set of Lego bricks, really. I kind of like a kid with a play set. And in the like, you know, sort of almost couple of years that I've been here, um, we've achieved so much. So we're at the point now where we've just got our inaugural um, entry into the Gartner IT Risk Management um, Magic Quadrant. We're leaders of vendor risk, um, built up a, almost a thousand customers. I mean, this stuff in the time frame that we've done it in is just unheard of in, in the industry. So it's just really, really exciting. And we have only just begun from that perspective. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's been awesome since you joined our team. And yeah, like you mentioned, in just a couple of years, um, you guys launched an entire GRC platform, audit management, policy management, IT risk management, security risk management, enterprise risk, operational risk. And not only that, but you got recognized in two magic quadrants you mentioned, a leader in vendor risk and inaugural appearance in IT risk. Um, and over a thousand customers in just a couple of years is, is awesome. So um, I know, Scott, the, you know, sometimes GRC and privacy are seen as different a lot of times are different technology platforms, different companies that offer these solutions and di even different people in the organization that use these solutions. Um, but to you, it was just so obvious really early on that these platforms need to come together. Um, mm -hmm. And we were the first in the world to bring those together. And our customers started asking for us to bring those together. But it, it's not necessarily obvious for everyone else uh, in the, in the, in, that's viewing us today. So maybe share a little bit about why like, how does privacy and GRC interact? Why does that make sense? And, and why is it hard if you have to do them separate? Yeah, so it's a great question. And look, to be honest with you, privacy is part of GRC. I mean, that's the beauty of it. And this is why it was been so obvious and why it's so nice to be able to bring the two worlds together. Really, off of the back of privacy regulations becoming more prevalent, and obviously GDPR and some of the other ones that are happening now, it forced it into its own sort of marketplace, and the spotlight was very much put on it. So it's almost taken out of GRC and given its own focus. But what we're able to do, and why it's really, really important, is privacy contributes so much. And in fact, so much outside of privacy contributes towards it as well. So the worlds are intrinsically linked. If we look at IT risk management, as privacy professionals, they are expected to have secure and protected data and ensure that when it's in transit, that it also maintains its level of security. So there is an instantaneous link to cybersecurity and IT risk to different subdomains of risk management. And then it's, well, we've got to make sure that our customer's data is safe and secure because if a breach comes along, well, that then spreads its wings into operational and enterprise risk. Because if you know we have a, a, a complete ending event where we lose significant amounts of data, customer you know, um, support and belief in our you know in a brand would come along, that could affect our ability to operate and achieve our goals. So it is all so intrinsically linked. Um, and the beauty of it is, is with a platform, you can have a helicopter view of all those different areas and those connections between them. 
Kape, you're on mute. <laughs> Rookie move. Thanks there, Scott. I like how you I like how you explain that though. So GRC is kind of a broad platform. Um, and that entire market's about governance risk compliance. And privacy is just one part of governance risk compliance. But when privacy regulations started coming out, the requirements to operationalize privacy were so different than just your typical GRC tool could do, which are, are you know are really just workflow tools at the end of the day. And with privacy, you had to do things like consent, like data subject rights. You have to data map things in a slightly different way than GRC tools were capable of doing. And so it created an entire market around privacy. But then when you mature the privacy market like we have, you start to realize that by having a different GRC tool and a different privacy tool, you have to re-enter all the information about your IT systems in two different places in a privacy tool to do privacy control and in a GRC tool to do information security and other controls. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, it's like a very obvious problem. And then what else I think um, you've talked to us about is that when you have data in two different platforms, you can't run AI as efficiently on that because right. AI needs a common ontology. And so many privacy and GRC professionals want to start becoming predictive and get insights on their on their risk information and compliance programs that's based on AI and machine learning. And it's just so hard when you have different platforms. And so, yeah, I think you, you nailed that that is kind of the direct driver that we've seen this market come together. Uh, yeah, and very proud that you've driven that for us and, and had so much success with our customer base. Um, now, the first use case, Scott, that you started tackling um, mm -hmm. when you were with OneTrust was really about information security. Uh, obviously, because you can't have privacy without security, and those things go hand in hand. And a lot of times, the privacy officer, the DPO, and the information security officer, the CISO, are, are very closely aligned. Can you tell us a little bit about how we help information security professionals, how we bridge that between privacy, what are the products we have there? Yeah, absolutely. So the beauty of our information security sort of systems and our sort of everything is from, we've broken it down into sort of three or four key modules. So you kind of have your IT risk management, which is basically your base platform. It's the engine of the car. It gives you the ability to take the privacy data that you've already done. So as an existing OneTrust customer, for example, you can rationalize all of your assets, processes, entities, and vendors that you've looked at. But what we can do is, is we can put a different lens on it. It's the same data. We're just looking at it in a slightly different way. So from an IT risk perspective, I'm looking at it in two ways. Way number one is from a cyber perspective. How secure is my castle? Am I defending it with a moat or am I going zero trust and I'm challenging everyone at every, you know, every step and every turn? So we give people the ability to track all of the initiatives with that and the risk associated with it and apply mitigating controls. The second part, though, is the IT risk area. And this is where I start to actually rationalize it in business context. So I look at the privacy and the security aspect and I bring that world together and I say, OK, well, what does it mean to my business? Can we operate? Are we going to deliver widgets? Will we hit our Q num you know, quarterly numbers? And will customers be ultimately satisfied? So the beauty of the way that we are working at the moment is that IT risk, policy management, document, distribute, gain attestation and understanding. So that falls in very nicely to the IT risk part. So think of that as kind of like you know, the seats of the car. And then we've got audit. An audit basically is someone coming in and checking you know, that the car is, is safe and secure and is going to go on its journey and the engine's operating correctly. We've then got vendor risk, which is kind of like an optional extra because some people want to look inwards and outwards at vendors. And that's kind of like someone coming externally to come and check. And then we have incident management. So if something goes wrong, I got to dial the AA, right? I have to cut someone to come and fix my car. I need that in context as well. And all of these modules, whilst they sound like individual components, are really just yeah. part of the same platform, all talking yeah. to each other. So we have an entire suite of tools for privacy. Now at GRC, we have an entire suite of tools for security built on the same platform. All the data is reusable, but different views and permissions for different teams that need to use a platform. I think that's been so exciting about what you've helped us develop, Scott, and, and why we have uh, so many customers consolidating those platforms and wanting to ditch their kind of legacy GRC tools. A lot of those GRC tools were built for like internal IT, uh, you know, auditors, and they're just like, you know, maybe to say something a little bit offensive, but they're just horrible tools. Like they're very bad UIs, you know, they're very legacy. And what was also interesting about what you did with OneTrust, you always used the phrase first line friendly. And I, and I love that. And first line meaning the business, 
You know, it's not the auditors in IT that's responsible for protecting the company. It's everybody. It's the business. And so privacy is the business's responsibility. And we built the OneTrust platform in a way that everyone in the company is a user. It's not technical. It's easy to use. And we actually transformed the GRC market from this legacy, clunky, clunky, boring thing into really being business facing, enabled, first line friendly, and then bringing that together in the platform. And yeah, that's um, really exciting. But information security is just the tip of the iceberg um, for what we do for GRC. You know, the GRC is like, like, like you said earlier, it's a generic term that means everything. Um, yeah. And information security GRC is one type of the solution, but there are broader needs in the GRC market for different enterprise risks, strategic risks, industry specific risks, can you talk about some of those use cases that um, that you've seen that that uh, our customers are interested in as well? Absolutely. So, look, it's been interesting. The past six months has taught us a lot about uncertainty. And in fact, actually, it's almost 2020 has been a compelling event. And so the tactical aspects of privacy and security, they serve those functions and they give me the ability to tell me my contributions to our organization's level of compliance in specific areas. But to go one step further, we have to put an additional layer of context around that. So I've got objectives that I need to achieve. I have operational daily things that need to happen and occur. And what are the risks associated with those? It's kind of almost like a hierarchy, like an upstream and downstream relationship. So what OneTrust can do is we can then take it next step further. With operational risk, you've got the ability to look at the day-to-day -day aspect. We can look at how we're operating, how we're doing, what puts things at stake. And then with enterprise risk, and this is the one probably where we're seeing the most people adjusting and pivoting and changing their direction because COVID's kind of forced them to, is that, that we look at our long-term strategy. What is going to impact? What is going to prevent us from achieving that? And then it gives us this capability to utilize all of the data sitting beneath it and say, right, I've got my risks and I've got my compliance because OneTrust gives you a compliance-based view as well. So what's the mandatory? What's the voluntary? What's the nice to have? Tracking all of that, the impact of change, and we bring that all together. It's kind of like this sort of pyramid almost, and or the helicopter view. I kind of like that. You're kind of in a helicopter looking down at your city. You're seeing all the firefighters. You're seeing the police force. You're seeing all the different people performing their actions, and you've got this guiding hand, but more importantly, you can also make strategic decisions. You can pick and choose what's going to happen and what's going to effectively make the needle move. Yeah, nice. And so all of this, I mean, the reason companies invest in privacy is because they want to be more trusted, ultimately. Um, and that's the same reason people invest in their security. They want to be more trusted. And so... If we think about security and privacy, privacy GRC as really just a means to the end and the end being trust, um, that helps us think a little bit broader. And that's a lot of what you and I talk about, Scott, and, and organizationally, you know, if you go to the onetrust.com website, you'll see our headline is be a more trusted organization. And it's not just privacy and security, but you have to think of a lot of different pieces to go into that. So, you know, help maybe share with our audience here, what's kind of the big picture? beyond privacy and GRC, what's kind of the big picture of, of how all the things that we're thinking about at OneTrust and you're thinking about kind of feed into this framework for trust? What is that framework? Yeah, so framework for trust, I like that. And in fact, actually, you can extend it into trust by design because we're all familiar with privacy by design. But trust by design is like I'm basically incorporating people process technology. I look at my security, which is quite academic and quite prescriptive. I look at my privacy, which is slightly more emotional. Uh, but it's an academic exercise still because of the legislation piece. But when we're talking to the, you know, our first line, it's quite an emotive subject because people care about their privacy. But then we need to look outside of that sphere and we have to look at all of the other areas. And to be able to do all of this, you've got to have, for example, data governance. All of this is driven by data. You know, where is my data? What is my data? How good? How clean? How structured? How accurate? How am I tracking, monitoring and making sure that that, you know, makes sense? So good data governance is absolutely fundamental. One trust has, you know, the the answer from that perspective. It's not just about discovery. It's about maintaining that quality from that perspective. Then it's the people part of the problem. And people, unfortunately, are one of those difficult aspects because, you know, for, uh, I think Jeff Goldblum said in Jurassic Path, life finds a way. Right. And it's so true because, 
because what happens is, is is your employees either malicious you know malevolent or benevolent they fall into the two camps and then you've got the unaware in the middle and what we need to be able to do is make sure from an ethics perspective ethics is going to become even bigger than it already is because it's not just about your employees doing the right thing it's actually about making sure that we have a clear support and tone from the top and more importantly we're focusing on the risk of where we could go into this sort of Schrodinger's clat of compliance where one person could make a big mistake. So it's looking at the component parts outside of traditional risk management and focusing it on all of the things that touch it, whistleblowing, um, you know, ethics, compliance, all of those areas from that perspective. Yeah. So just to summarize what you said, it's privacy, security, data governance, third party risk. So external and internal ethics and compliance your preferences and your consent and bringing all of that together, not just operationally in the organization so you can generate the right KPIs for trust, but also bringing it together externally on an organization's website so that the user experience for your consumers and your customers and your employees is consistent. So you don't have all these different different security page, different privacy page, different whistleblowing page, different bug bounty page, different cookie banner, different. It's like, it's a nightmare if you don't bring it together. And then if you do that successfully, you can make trust not just a risk reduction activity, but a competitive advantage. You can actually start to measure how it's a, a profit center, not a cost center. And that's what's so exciting about the work you're doing here at One Trust Scott. Um, thanks for joining us today. We're lucky to have you on the team helping us uh, execute on this mission. And I think that's a wrap for today's LinkedIn Live. So thanks everyone for joining us. Thanks Bye. everyone. Bye-bye.